what is it? Well, pride can be described as satisfaction of one's achievements. It can also be described as one's dignity. But to one community, it means so much more. It's a sense of accomplishment, a form of expression. Since humans founded the first civilizations and gained the ability to discover themselves, they dabbled in expressing their gender and sexual identities. In the modern era, they would be known as the LGBTQIA community. Though the acronym LGBT is relatively new, the history of this community runs deep with roots going back to cultures around the world, such as emperors in China having male lovers, to the skinship bonding of samurai in Japan, to the indigenous people of Americas having many gender roles and places for queer folk to participate. Going back even further, cavemen and in ancient Greece? I see you, Sappho. In even Egypt, no matter where you would have looked in the old world, we were there. We've always been there. This is me giving a content warning for the next part of the video because I'm going to be covering some uh, distressing stuff that has to do with the oppression of queer people, so this is just a heads up. Though, as proud as I am to announce that fact, the culture of queer folks would not be an easy path. The common era was full of hardships. With the rise of Christianity in Europe, many queer folks were met with anti-sodomy laws, such as the buggery law. We were being prosecuted. Moving to the 1800s, looking at America, the Purity Act took effect. At this point, it seemed hopeless that queer people would ever be free. In Germany, leading up to World War II, many people were placed in concentration camps for being gay. They were forced to wear pink triangles. In the future, this symbol of oppression would be one for hope. Though, queer folk were easily accepted in the far past. The common era wasn't so accepting. Queer people went into hiding. Being gay was a crime. It wouldn't be till the 1930s where some would catch a small break. In the 30s, nine years prior to World War II, a woman named Lily Elby in Germany was the first to receive gender-affirming surgery. And later, places known as gayberhoods would show up across the world. Wow, being gay was illegal. In these gayberhoods, gay people had some sense of freedom. Leading up to the 40s, crime syndicates realized that they could capitalize the queer community. So they opened the first clubs. Drag events became a common occurrence in these places. Being gay, you were forced to keep a secret. But in these places, people were able to show parts of themselves the world would think repulsive otherwise. In 1962, the first positive discussion of homosexuality was held on radio. One of these people leading this would be Randy Wicker, one of the founders of the Homosexual League of New York. In 1964, thousands of gay soldiers were kicked out of the military, leading to the first gay rights protest in New York. The Homosexual League of New York, Mansheen Society, and the Daughters of Bilitis led the charge. The 60s is when we started to raise our voices. We were in the public eye. We were beginning to feel pride. Unbeknownst to anyone, one event was soon to occur that would change history and ignite the future to come. The Stonewall Inn was a notorious gay bar invested in by the Mafia in 1966. To stop from closing down, the Mafia paid off the police every week 
until one night, on June 28, 1969, four undercover officers entered the bar, eventually signaling a raid. But it didn't go as planned. When the officers arrived and proceeded to arrest people, a fight ensued, leading the other patrons to fight back. People were starting to gather and a riot broke out. The second night of riots, thousands of people stood outside Stonewall. Another fight broke out at this time. Notable people in the vanguard were Marsha P. Johnson, Zezu Nova, and Jackie Hermona. The following days would be full of conflict with police and love for each other. A year later, a celebration was held. The Christopher Street Gay Liberation Day March was held. This would be known as the first Pride Parade, though not everyone was welcome. In 1973, at the Christopher Street Gay Liberation Day March, Sylvia Rivera, a trans activist, had to face backlash for her identity. The speech that she spoke would later be known as the Gay Power Speech. Street on 640 
812 Street between B and C, apartment 14. The people that are trying to do something for all of us and not men and women that belong to a white middle class, white club. And that's what you all belong to. Revolution now! Give me a kiss! The message of gay power still holds true today. As sad as it is to say, many people around this time were looked over, such as non-binary and intersex people, as well as trans people. In 1977, the first pride flag was made by Gilbert Baker. It had eight stripes, then seven, and finally six. This flag would be the one that most people know today. The flag would later have new designs in the 2010s, including intersex and trans flags being added, and adding black and brown to show support to people of color, another marginalized group. In the 1980s, the political climate was getting heavy. Ronald Reagan would be elected as president in 1981. Around the same time, a new virus was spreading. It was called AIDS, standing for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. The media called it gay cancer, and a panic started to form. The disease started to attack the gay community. In 1983, they realized how it spread, and named it HIV, standing for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. This time wasn't easy for queer people. They were forced to watch their friends and family die, and the Reagan administration didn't take the virus seriously. That's just the way the general populace seen us at the time. Though, through immense losses, people felt more connected than before. But later on, medication to treat the disease would be manufactured. 1933. The Don't Ask, Don't Tell law was passed, stopping any queer person in the military from discussing their identity, and barring any queer person from joining the military. In 1999, Monica Holmes, a veteran of the Navy and a trans activist, created the trans pride flag. In the hindsight, the 90s were a relatively quiet decade, but one thing is for sure. Public opinion was changing. In 2001, Netherlands made same-sex marriage legal, making it the first country to do so. Many countries afterward would soon follow. In 2004, same-sex marriage was legalized in Massachusetts, making it the first U.S. state to do so. From the mid-2000s onward, public opinion would change of homosexuality. It began to sway, slowly but surely. Homosexuals were starting to become accepted. The Don't Ask, Don't Tell laws was repealed in 2011 for cis people and trans people in 2021. In 2014, the non-binary flag was created by NBT named Kai Rowan. After years of activism, protest, and misunderstanding, in June of 2015, a law took effect making it legal to same-sex marry in all 50 states. 
It was a huge victory for the community. Every June thereafter had Pride events, and June would officially be Pride Month. Though some got what they wanted, there was still lots of work to be done, especially for the trans community. Trans people had the short end of the stick. People looked at them with confusion. The same can be said of any sexual or gender identity that aren't cisnormative. It was up to us and the community to educate people. In 2021, trans visibility would be acknowledged nationwide. When Biden announced that March 31st would be known as Trans Day of Visibility. Of course, it was celebrated beforehand, but this was national and showed the country we were here. And for intersex and non-binary people, some states allowed you to mark your gender X. In fact, you can do it nationwide in Australia and a few other countries. Another thing happened throughout the 90s and 2000s. Trans people could easily change their bodies to their liking with hormones and blockers. Though trans healthcare is being attacked, it's still way easier to transition since the days of Lily Elby. In recent times, the community is making strides. But there's still people who want to see us fail. In fact, this year alone, more than 300 bills have been introduced in 36 states to restrict LGBT rights. There are still those who wish to do us harm and oppress us. As a community, we have accomplished so much over the last few decades, and yet we have also lost so much. But one thing we have right now is each other, and we won't let anything stop us, stop us from being us. Our community was built on oppression, love, and acceptance. We will not be held back. We're stronger than ever. We're prideful. I'll end this with one question for you. And that's, what does pride mean to you? Thanks for watching.